Thank you for joining the September 11th, 2018 Volta call. And today we'll be going over primarily Sprint 7 status update and reviewing new JIRAs as well. Do keep in mind that we record the sessions to post on YouTube, so keep that under consideration during comments, uh, discussion, and presentations. And with that, I think we'll start with today's discussion. We do have a few new JIRAs that have come in over the past week. And then we'll go into updates for the primarily the in-progress items in Sprint 7. So if we go over to the new issue, starting with 1201, if I can find it here, get the right tab. All right, uh, the first one was opened by Nick a few days ago, open OLT, non-recoverable Broadcom error when pushing flow. And this one is being worked currently by Nick. I did not check if Nick is on the bridge. Yes, you are. Nick, any any comments on this? Uh, so I, I just connected audio. So yeah. Uh, ah, okay. Four, I, um, I I was just taking a look at 1201, where we have a Broadcom CSP opened for yeah. that. So I can. Yeah. So we've seen that there is some sort of error in the. the in the Broadcom API, which make it so that in some cases, some downstream flows fail to be added for some kind of multicast error. I think it's trying to create a multicast group for the port and because we're setting the same VLAN on those flows, it was crashing. I mean, it, it was sometimes crashing. So to go around this, we created new set of flows to set up the downstream and enabling the packet out um, the, the downside is it's not it's not a clean way to do it. It's uh, uh, removing some VLAN from use, but uh, everything is working fine and we don't have the error. Before we had an error, basically one every 50 we knew reboot, oh, and now we, we don't have it anymore. I opened the CSP with Broadcom uh, to go to the bottom of the, I mean, of the real problem, and I'm waiting to hear from them. Thanks, Any questions from the group? So, Nick, uh, it's not just a multicast flow, right? It's everything. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a regular flow. It's just that the, um, when we add this flow that we used to add, it's uh, exercising some multicast code in the Broadcom drivers. Multicast or broadcast. Basically, yeah. it's when we try to share a, a default VLAN, let's say 4091, amongst multiple unis or multiple uh, ONUs, rather, which we are because they're all coming up as the default. In Broadcom's code, it says, oh, you're trying to have multiple ONUs act on the same VLAN ID. You must want to do multicast or broadcast. Yeah. One out of 50 times, it says, I can't do that, and leaves it in a state that's irreversible. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the biggest problem. It's not like a, we could just, if we detect the problem, reboot the ONU and make it go away. It's when we're there, we need to reboot the ONT. Or it's to go away. So, how did you guys find out? It's one every fifty times. <laughs> did you do it in a <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the ONF folks find the problems, and then, then yeah, I just unplug and plug them back eight by eight. Yeah, I realized that yeah, it was happening roughly every fifty times. And luckily, we have enough O and U's, so we can we can pull it back. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's only with with a with like 4091, the sh uh, shared? Uh... Uh, it's only if you share VLAN on the downstream flow. Uh, if it's 4091, another one doesn't change much. It's more like a, if there is a shared VLAN. And that was the problem. Um, hmm. But to go around this, we create all the flows uh, for one phone port. All flows use a different uh, VLAN for no new. For now. Uh, for now. Uh, instead of 491, basically each one you get to default one on the downstream. Doesn't change anything in the in the ONU adapters or the requirement for the EAP message. It's just one thing that Broadcoms need to enable the ability to do a packet out. If there is no downstream flow, Broadcom refuse to do a packet out. Um. I'm 
I'm wondering. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, maybe we can have. Uh, it, it's it's like there's a default view that associated to the uni pool internally, sort of like that, right? Concept, right? Um, yeah. So I mean, it the the way we've done it, it's just affecting the OLT downstream flow. So basically, the, as a consequence, VLAN. Uh, if we have if we load it fully, so 257 ONUs, VLAN 3,750, I mean 43 to 4,000 are reserved for this. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, the consequences. We we don't think it's that bad in the short term. Mm -hmm. Just we're taking away 250 VLANs. Potentially subscriber VLANs. Yes. Um, but I mean, in I know in all AT and T um, algorithm for subscriber, those VLAN are not used, and since they are the one by the end, it may be the same for most uh, operators. But yeah, I mean, the real fix obviously is making this code yeah. print Broadcom work, and then we can go back to working as we all expect. Yeah, but you know, in the meantime, things, okay. things must work. So right now, right now, basically, okay. So the status is you you basically apply a workaround now. Yeah, um, we have a workaround. Uh, I don't know what you want me to do with the ticket. Do I close it? Do I leave it open until Broadcom responds uh, and fix it? Uh, I don't know what. Uh, we'll gather more information. Oh, yeah. Do I open a separate ticket to track the Broadcom error? I don't know. That's your choice, Julie. I yeah I I I so this is a workaround uh, maybe maybe complete this one and then open the new one when um, yeah. and then okay. provide a, yeah we can do that and then provide a link to this one so we know where to find okay. the workaround after right. the bug is resolved by Broadcom right okay that sounds good thanks All and, right. and, and before Go before ahead. that before we do that um I wonder. Chip, are you on? So is I know you guys is not using Broadcom, right? So, so, yeah. so, so your ONT well does doesn't have this issue. I would assume. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I haven't dug it, dug into that, especially since it's a group issue, and and of course our ours is a whole different kind of stack down down in it. Right. So, so, so I, 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 I just okay. I, I'm. Uh, I, I, I often wonder. So, what, what is the correct way to do this? I think, but I think Foundry has a good, 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 good gra uh, uh, grab about it. Okay. So I think that that is fine. So maybe when the new ticket opens, um, we can also consult with other ONTs also and see what's the behavior. Yeah. Um, is it on just like the alpha O O and U's or do the uh, uh, O L T O L T? This is O L T. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh. It doesn't uh, impact the O and U's at all. Yeah. This is yes. This is pushing for O L T. Okay. Good. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this one before we move on? All right. Next one is twelve o two. And this is again Open OLT, incorporate KPI extensions in Open OLT adapter. This one's being worked by Michael. And I believe, so this one, I did see there is a merge in Garrett. Is this waiting for additional work or is this one complete? I will check with Mike, but I think there was okay. some additional thing. Okay, okay, thanks. All right, questions from the group before we move on? And the next one, 1203, incorrect naming of gem port ID and alloc ID as ag port ID and sketch ID on the open OLT gRPC interface. And this one is complete. This was worked by Girish. Uh, any questions from the group? What, what does this one mean? Um, uh, oh, sorry, uh, it was, uh, there was a misunderstanding on my side and I created this one and I wanted to reject this task, but uh, there was no option to reject. So I just, I have updated comments. 
I think I'm okay. Right. Okay, got it. Oh, okay. I see. Sorry, I, I missed the comment down there, Girish. Okay. All right. And Thank by the you. way, is there a way to reject uh, certain uh, task stories or uh, defects? Because I don't see such an option on Jira. Um, I can change this one to closed instead of done to imply that no work was submitted for it. Okay, that makes that, that's sense. at least a minimum key for us. <laughs> we tried to change the workflow one time, okay. and they yeah, messed it up the. Well. It didn't go well, so 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 right now. Usually, uh, usually, what we can do also change uh, added added a description on the on the title. Say dropped. You know, uh, we can do that. Um, sure, I can do that as well. Okay, or you could put it at the front if you want. I can change that after. Then the next one, 1204, open OLT, change NNI port number. It was overlapping with Uniport. <coughs> and let's see. Nick, it looks like you were working on this. It's already done. It does show it's done. And it looks oh, like yeah. Garrett isn't talking oh, like for me again. Yeah, there are tickets from Garrett. There's okay. All right. Any questions from the group? And 12.05 is the next Thank you. Sorry, again, yeah. right? So go back. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it mean? So that 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 is my 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 concern. You know, the 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 the, the poor ranges for uni and 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 NI, right? Um, now, it seems to me. Separate. I, I make sure that there is no overlap now, basically, and there is no overlap with the pawn ports either. 65,536, I think yeah. is the NNI port number now. So anybody running around with port 128 in any of their configurations, it's yeah. now 65,536. Yeah. <laughs> How now, did yeah, that yeah, number come up? Uh, it mathematically worked out to be. power 16. Yeah. So basically the first 16 bits are for the unis, and then after, um, the next range is for the NNI, and then farther along, uh, I think it's after 28 bits or something, you have the pump ports. How, how about okay. um, this is separate, and there is no overlap possible now. How about like logical ports? Like if we have a lag interface, do they have their uh, own lag? I don't know, we haven't really considered the lag. I mean, right now, the NNIs are. 65,000, yeah. I mean, we still have space. Yeah, I mean, we have space, so we'll be the lag in after the first uh, four or eight, 18, or 18 bits or something. Yeah. So we got room. We, yeah, we would probably need to create an extra set, but there's less space. Um, okay. Do we have a, a story? You know, uh, I, I'm, you know, my memory is really bad. Um, do we have a bit mapping uh, allocation? Um, is that open flow? It's in an overflow spec? No, it's, uh, it's in the adapter for now, and in the new core, it should be in the core. So I thought the logical port was only 32 bits. Is that 64 bits? I think, um, it's, 34. I think it's 32 bits in uh, OpenFlow. And I just That's think just the top five or six are reserved. Mm. Are we talking about the ID of the logical uh, device, or? No, they're not the ID of the logical device. The, um, the ports. support numbers. Ah, OK. We could, we could, okay. Use, a, we could use a resource manager. And just, uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, in, the, um, in the new core, all of the port numbering is handled by the core, so then Maybe like a, a clean slate of you know the uni are over there, the uni over there, the logical port that are you know lag groups and stuff are over there, and then the pawn ports are over there. Maybe they they need to be something clean and cut for all adapters in the core in the new core. But in the meantime, it's just fixing the open OLT side uh, to okay. to make sure we don't have any overlap and. Um, any crash when you plug the eight or new on the point zero. 
Um, so can can someone do me a favor, provide the, the bid allocation range schema associated to this ticket? I mean, to 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 the port assignment, port ID assignment. Maybe maybe put it on on this ticket. There's some ASCII art in the source file. Yeah. Just saying the bit, you know, the bit one through thirty-two is for this, or something like that, or but one to thirty-one for this range. Uh, I would copy it from the file to the ticket. Can you say that again? Nick said he'd put it in the ticket for you, Sean. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh huh. Thank you, Nick. Other questions? All right, the next one is a uh, defect Volta hangs with etcd connection failures. And this one, Shad, it looks, let me see if Shad's on the bridge. Um, I don't see. I don't see Chad. By, by Shad, so it was opened by Mateo. And this one, the devices command in the Volta CLI, oops, Volta CLI hangs indicating Volta is blocked. And then we do have I some details on the log. This clears after, like, once that CD is up and running and Volta is connected to it. I mean, it's like if you run by, I've seen this happen, but if you give it, like, the two minutes it needs to get its act together. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, I, I've seen this, but it's usually a side effect of Volta actually isn't connected to SCD properly yet, but will within 30 seconds. Um, that's my two cents on it anyway. Okay. And so, so can we get Mateo to double check this or at least verify with him if this is on a startup? If it's if it happens sporadically throughout the runtime, then yeah, we got an issue. But right. but hey, on startup, I've I've I considered it this part of starting up. And did they put the priority as a high here? Conditions. I mean, I mean, maybe it, it, have, have the API calls fail fast and say, you know, core not ready or something. Right. Something comforting. Um, but yeah. And then, and, and would the compute resource has something to do with this also? Maybe their server is not meeting the minimum requirement. No, I doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. It might change the 30 seconds to 20 seconds or 15 seconds, maybe. but it's not. Right. It's not just hanging there, right? Okay. There, there are some retry between the CD and Volta, you know, depending on who's starting first. Now, I will say this. If you restart vCore, you'll be waiting for a couple of minutes for the new vCore to claim the old data. So Yeah, there's like the election process. Yeah, um, we see now. But again, you know, context is everything, so. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll try. We'll work to get a response back from Matteo on the conditions in which he sees this. Anything else before we move on? Okay, next new issue is 1206. If gRPC connection with OpenLT fails, device should report that. Again, opened by Matteo and being and assigned to Shad. And let's see here, device fails to activate, and then we have a snip from the logs here. And then a capture of the CLI, device's CLI command report as well. I think basically if the clutch with the failed device should report that. So basically you need to have an event coming up, right? Time out, give up, and say I've waited 30 seconds and it's not happening, or something like that. Yeah, it could be it's just continuously trying, and then after some predefined interval, just say I give up. And then, question for the group 
so is this so this is listed as a pre uh, medium priority right now is this something that we think should try to be pulled in for a fix in sprint seven or focus maybe later in the hardening sprint any views from the group what, what so what uh, is actually going on is it, so the device is actually there but then the, the connection fails and it doesn't retry or, or is it uh, so the device to... fails to activate oh go ahead we, we need to check i mean dig deeper i'll take a look at it or ask chad or material you know, this is very similar to that state machine issue you know what it might be the same thing oh, where yeah. the state, there's a there's a, a race condition on the, the changes on the state oh yeah machine. so it might be fixed already by uh 1208 yeah this might be a duplicate 1208 yeah this 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 it took it over three days ago, right? So you, yeah, you, you think one, there's one from yesterday. yesterday. So when Nick and I were testing yesterday, we found it. I think it's the same thing. We just it might be. We just didn't look. Okay. For the okay. So which we, and which ticket is that? Twelve oh eight. Yeah. We don't know. If that's it. Right. it might be. It's very very similar. It's a race condition okay. in state machine, and I, okay. I have a patch outstanding. Okay. The other description is much better. Much better. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know it's a state machine problem. Well, yeah, exactly. I know what it means. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> uh, Nick, did you say you were going to check on that? Yeah, yeah I or, will. Okay, thank you. How come I can never get your name to pop? Nickel, <laughs> Nicholas, Nicholas. If you. I think if I'll I'll fix it later. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. All right, then the next one, twelve oh seven, uh, open OLT, and this is early init of alarm manager, stats manager, and bandwidth manager. And yeah, I think this open chat. Uh, yeah, I think it was done. Right? Yeah, I mean there there's a. Uh, yes, and it looks like it's merged. Okay. Do I need to check with Shad before moving it to done? You can, but I mean, from our purposes. You've been, you've been working on it with him? Yeah, or I mean, I, I, I've seen, okay. I, I would keep it. It's not, it was not much. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I will. Any questions from the group? So I'll go ahead and move that one to done. And then 1208, this is the one we were saying may be um, the same as 1206. We'll find out. Anything else you wanted to add for the discussion here? And you do have a, a patch out there for this. No, uh, just that, you know, with state machine problem, the ordering wasn't quite right. There's a race condition. And mm -hmm. before we used to win it, and since basically 1207, when Chad moved the creation of objects around, it's adding just the extra milliseconds we needed to lose. So now it's we we should be good now. And it might be twelve or six hours. I'll I will look into more detail. Thanks. And this one it's not merged yet, so that's still in progress. Okay. Any other questions from the group? And the next one, twelve oh nine, add alarm type name field to alarm extensions for publishing to Kafka. And this one is in progress. And exposing alarm type is a key value pair in the alarm classes in the Volt Extensions alarms. And so this one is, I think, in progress. So, so what what yes. what what's, what what does type mean? Is that is that the specific alarm or is that uh, yeah, it's kind of the alarm. alarm. Uh, I mean, currently, the type of the alarm, for example, lost, kiwi drift, and so on are part of the name of the alarm and just adding it as an extra field to make easier the sorting and everything by uh, uh, what is it like Kibana or something like this, some other upstream uh, collector. collector. Yeah. So, so you basically have a group of alarm under the same type, right? No, it's not. It's not even no, that. It's, it's just it's an alarm ID, the, right. the object. Oh. Instead of having the the type of alarm just in the name, having also as part of as an attribute of the object, so, and can be easily retrieved. So, 
so the type was implied by the name, and that yeah. was just going to be explicit with its own people. Yeah, it's just to make um, processing easier. It's okay. Illegal. So is that is is, is that a good uh, description? Is it alarm type? Yeah, it's uh, adding the alarm type to, and maybe yeah, saying that it's for passing purposes, maybe clearer. But that's that's it. Okay. Okay, and I see we're missing a story true? point estimate here as well, so we'll need to get that uh, updated. Uh, one one thing actually, by the way, um, so Nick, <laughs> just just. I think the this uh twelve oh seven right uh, does it I think the the story point is five um it, did 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 it actually oh that's that's Chad's ticket so okay um I, I'm wondering what it actually takes take five also never mind okay okay uh twelve oh nine any other questions or discussion. All right, we'll move on to 1210, exceptions on disabling and re-enabling the ONU. And this one has some steps or some description of the setup and the steps. Yeah, for so I, I've seen this before. I've looked at it a little bit. The, 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 there's two uh, state machines, a performance interval state machine and an alarm sync state machine in the open OMCI core. Um, on the performance one, basically, we're exercising the disable and stop path a little bit more and it kind of shook out this one error. And the other one, the alarm sync one, is when it starts up, there's some uh, variables missing in the constructor. Um, I wasn't sure if Chip may have been looking at it. Uh, I'd, I'd seen it, and it hadn't affected traffic passing, but um, I didn't want to go chase it down unless somebody else wasn't going to. But um, if Chip has any comments, it's great. Yeah, Otherwise, I think... Yeah, I think Jason at Acton, he's on the call, I believe, if he's awake still. And uh, uh, we're, we're looking at maybe trying to simplify the alarm uh, sync state machine. So we can probably fix it during that period. But I think he's having some issues with the setup. So, I mean, so, I mean, I mean I'm just going to leave I'm it well enough alone. Then. At this point, because, I mean, it's not affecting my the ability for me to do its primary functions. Um, so I'll leave it. I'll leave it be. Uh, I think there's a ticket from Jason. Okay. And so, Chip, were you saying that this might be resolved by some work that that Jason and you have been doing? Uh, well, I think that he's, he's he might be looking into um, okay. you know, the okay. duration of that. So, uh, I'll let him. Is, <laughs> uh, I don't know how it's going on. It back to the open OMCI alarm, so. I need to reproduce the, this issue. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jason. I'm Jason. I'm Jason. Oh, I'm oh. okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, then, then I think we'll leave this for now. If we need to link it to another Jira issue later, that's fine as well. Any other? So, so okay. yes. So, so I want to make sure how is going on this uh, this issue. Uh, I'm asking to the map uh, how to reproduce this issue. So there, there's actually two of them in here. The the, the first one is for the pro, um, I think the alarm sync one. That one happens just by enabling an ONU. So bring up the system, plug in an ONU, let um, the synchronizer do its job, and let it finish the initial MIB sync synchronizer finish. And once it's done. At that point, the other state machines fire off, one of them being alarm sync, and then that's when it happens. Um, the other well, one, the performance interval ones, it only happens when you disable the ONU. Okay. So the, this uh, problem is uh, after enable yes. command. The first, uh, one of them is, is on enable, and the other one's on disable, basically. Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay, we've got and this is Jim yeah, I'll, I'll look into the performance interval state machine. I'll, I'll do that since that's my responsibility. So I'll look into it. And Jason, you have the ONU you can verify now, right? But I don't have the Alfred ONU. I now I only have the Iskatel ONU, but I need to verify what the software can do this test. 
So I need to check. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later about other type. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, no problem. All right, anything else before we move on? Okay, next one is 12.11, Owen, you stuck in initial MIB downloaded state after reboot. Yeah, um, I got comments on this one. Um, so this one, there's a kind of a couple different things going on. There's a, a thread on Volta Discuss where basically the same thing that's on the ticket. One part is, is there's some uh, OMCI message received related to alarming, I think, that is not quite parsing correctly, which is a bit of a red herring for this issue. Um, the other part regarding the ONU stuck in the initial MIB download state, um, that piece is caused by the ONU has come up, MIB is completed, syncing, and has told ONOS, I'm here, push flows at me. And then the flows after decomposers had its way with it is sent to the handler but certain fields, either VLAN ID fields are missing or set to zero, causing it to skip the actual pushing of OMCI. So it never proceeds into the, the next reason code, which I have called OMCI flows pushed, which are actually some of the flows from ONOS. Looking at it, it appears to me that the flow that we received um, was just wrong. I'm not sure how this could have happened, um, but the uh, decomposer, there may have been some work done recently to it to cause the VLAN ID to be zero and the set VLAN ID to be zero, causing it to skip the whole section. Um, or maybe they enabled it with VLAN zero. Oh, maybe it is. Not, yeah. not uh, it out. So, uh, yeah. Well, is, is it, isn't VLAN zero used in the priority flows? Prior, uh, I mean, on it's the, not no, the normal the VLAN? But I think the set VLAN needs to be something else, right? Yeah. Set VLAN oh, you, oh. On, on the uh, network side, you mean? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the match, the, having it be zero for the matches, that's good. It's now I need to turn it into something other than zero. And it basically said, you told me to change it to zero again. And the logic in the code is to just skip the whole thing if that comes in. I mean, what I may do at a minimum is put some logging in, else, else that if that says if it happens, let somebody know so it is a little clearer. Um, but we'll probably have to talk to Shad and Mateo just to kind of see how it got in the state, but um, there's a copy of the flow down at the bottom that kind of shows what happened. But uh, we'll we'll sort it out and we'll update the ticket as needed. Okay, thanks. And then I think probably we'll move this one to uh, put it in 2.0 and then figure out if this will be worked in this sprint or not. Uh, Jeff, not all I don't want. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Well. I was going to say it probably will be, but we'll see. It. We've we've been doing a lot yeah. of back and forth. Okay. Somewhere. I just didn't want to move it since he wasn't here to <laughs> to confirm he had exactly. cycles to do it. <laughs> okay. So, Thanks. So is that yeah. is that just just happens all the time, or or basically just on certain flows? Or? Oh, well, no. this particular this particular issue, it only happened to one out of four or five O and U's, um, which is strange. Um, and in our testing, you know, we haven't had that. I mean, in the last, yesterday when we did it, we didn't test with eight O and U's, and I hadn't seen it. But um, but with that one particular one, it's yeah, why it happened on that one, and it looks like it happened on a disable re-enable. So uh, there may be some other things going on here that we need to kind of sync up on. But um, the 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 heart of it was is the flow coming in wasn't right, and now it's trying to back our way into well, who sent it, and how did it get in that state? And why only that one O and U, and not the four others? Other questions? Oh. Okay. Uh, so when you've got more info, then if you could populate that in the ticket, it'd be greatly appreciated. So thanks for your help with that. And then 1212 is the next one. Deprecate the AVC and alarm queues in OMCICC. That one is Chip. Yeah, and that's, that's, oh, I'm sorry. I was just saying, this is the side effect of the previous one where something else was happening at the same time causing you know, misassociation of what was going on. But anyway, yeah, Chip, it's it's all you. Yeah, yeah, and, and for, for this one, uh, in the very, really early version of the OMCI communications channel, there was cues for the alarms, ABCs, and test results. And now that we have a pub sub bus that 
um, so people can subscribe to to receive specific message types. There's there's no reason to really have a, a queue out there uh, collecting these messages. So this is mainly code clean cleanup. Um, I was going to ask on the mailing list, um, Chip. You, um, you'd mentioned you were you were very quickly able to decode that hex into something meaningful. Um, do you have like a quick like one liner to do that, or something very you know simple to say, you know, without having to count bits and go and look it up and you know do all the mapping because I'm lazy. Um, yeah, yeah. The, well, one one is read read yourself in OMCI for seven months and <laughs> and decode things by hand, but the uh, first first four nibbles, if they're all zeros, then that's an autonomous message. So that'll be a test result, ABC or alarm. So that's, that's, that pushes you, lets you know right off what's happening. And then usually on startup after a bib reset, you might, you'll, you'll usually not see uh, alarms, but you will see ABCs. And then on enable or disable of a port, you'll probably see uni alarms, which is what that happens to be. So, so you're just really good at, at this because you've been staring at it for so long. Yeah, yeah and, and I, I've got like when I was always doing, I keep a piece of scratch paper around that always has it break, broken out so I can quickly zone in on the uh, MEID, which comes after the zero A and the, the alarm. Yeah, so this, 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 I mean, Wireshark has a decoder for it too. Every time I try to wire the it seemed like it makes a total mess of it. Um, I'll, I'll try it again. Maybe it's been fixed, or maybe I was using it wrong. Anyway, yeah, I was just right. curious. You, you seemed to know what it was really quick, and I was getting out my paper, getting ready to figure it out. <laughs> it might be something nice to have in the CLI and just cut and paste something in. Or is there something like a translator or something? Yeah. So. All right. Moving on to the next one, we've got a defect ball 1213, open OMCI frame decode failure on alarm notification. And, and find that yeah, this here. relates to, to what Matt was talking about. I opened it on it. And I, th I think the reason that it's failing is probably it's decoding a message when, in the part of, of OMCI decode. If OMCI disabled, it returns a none. So it doesn't decode the frame. And I think the OMCI uh, code needs to properly check that so it doesn't throw this this assert. All right, thank you. Questions? Okay, the next item, 1214. This is cleanup blog messages and use provided blogging mechanisms. And it looks like Stefan has opened this one and assigned it to himself as well. And Stefan, do we have you on the bridge? Um, I don't think I see Stefan on the bridge today. Okay. Um, any questions from the group that we need to take back? Uh, no. Uh, this one is just like uh, this is ongoing work. This is. Um, I asked him to open that because it's uh, he submitted some code and then uh, this was one of the to dos to do. So I asked him okay. just to to open a Jira to track it. Okay, thank you. And is he planning to do this? I, I think since a subtask, I think it inherits the sprint from something else. But is this planned for for the current sprint? Mm, it will depend, but um, okay. if you can do it, yes. Otherwise, it will be for the next one. Okay, got it. Thank you. And then 1215 is the next one, implement proper error handling. And yeah, again, open to sign to Stefan. Yeah, it's the same. It's similar. Okay. similar. All right. Okay, let me refresh once more, see if anything else came in. It looks like that's it. So thanks, everyone. Let me go back to the agenda really quickly here. And then uh, let's go over to sprint status updates. So we're, we're just partway through uh, week two of our three-week sprint for Sprint 7. And so we'll do a recap of where we are on on the in-flight items. So Ken, since I was just talking with you about other issues, I was going to check in with you on 801 and 1097 if these are targeted for um, are for completion in Sprint 7. 
and look at 80, uh, 801. Uh, just a little bit of Kafka. Um, yeah, it's uh, what pretty much uh, RC is done. It's just an uh, equation because I'm integrating uh, it with the core and making changes. Uh, so it's, okay. I would like to keep it open because um, it's most of the work is done, but uh, I don't want to say it's done, done until okay. it's uh, all the other methods have been uh, integrated. All right, sounds good. And then 1097, implement the Volta Core Southbound API. Yeah, it's the same, uh, it's okay. uh, the same uh, category. Thank you for that. Then we can move on to the next item. We got 1054. This is for switching the full to deployment from Docker to Kubernetes. And this is uh, for the <coughs> test automation work that's ongoing. And let me see if Gilles is, yes, Gilles, uh, is this on track for, for Sprint 7 or do you have any issues that need to be discussed with the community? Um, my, we've had some problems with uh, Kubernetes. Uh, uh, mainly, uh, Cube DNS uh, is, was not working for us. We're still trying to address that, so that set us back. But I mean, yeah, we should be able to still complete it in Sprint Seven. Okay. And did you, you you review with the Suchi tra right? Uh, and so, is there something? Oh, that's eleven twenty nine. Yeah, we can jump down there. That's fine. Yeah, so I, I'm just wondering whether the code review in, in, get involved, is she going to review it or anybody? Yeah, I had a, I had a uh, chat with her, um, but I, I, you know, I had a call, in fact, right. and, um, and we talked about it, but uh, she seemed to be, uh, uh, you know, from, from a QA perspective, she's not, uh, so she wasn't the proper type to, uh, to review the code itself. So okay. uh, he was leaving it to more to the uh, the core Volta uh, people uh, to review. That's what she said. Okay. Um, so I hop over there now and gear it. Okay. Um, so I, I see some of the Richard uh, Stefan, you know, is listed here and can. Do you guys have any um, experience with a Ropa script? Can do you know? Are you guys using the robot? Well, well, well I saw the demo, but I, I'm not familiar with the script. I, I can, I can just go, yeah, approve. <laughs> yeah, just, just go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just go ahead, do that, and then okay. see what. Yeah, please do. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, let me jump back up here a little bit. Okay, so 1022 reporting of ONE registration IDs from Volta. So I believe, Venkata, you picked up this work. Uh, yes, yes. Recently. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I, I've, I've, I've gone through today. the part. Of, yeah, I mean, part of the problem was uh, kind of fixed. So I'm still in the. Venkata, one thing is, I think uh, maybe. Girish, as I mentioned, Girish and uh, Amit maybe have done. Yeah. Has, yeah, please work I, with them. Uh, sure, sure. I exchanged some emails with Amit as well. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And then CC Sean Misset. Yes. If you come in communication with them. Chad is a CC, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then. 506. So this one actually, so the patch has been there and we have some folks who've been looking at, at this in Garrett and some questions came up to see if we could do a walkthrough of the code. So tentatively we have this scheduled now. So this wasn't there last night when I sent this out, but tentatively next Thursday, we're trying to line up a walkthrough of the changes so we can have some Q&A and some discussion on the, on the patch that was submitted for 506. So that is right now we're looking at next Thursday. So I think probably, is there anything else we need to discuss with 506 today? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. Then 733, I think was still waiting for um, some additional, I think there's been some back and forth. 
on comments and we're waiting for a response. Let me see, Amit, are you on? Amit, I think we have some updated comments from, from Corey on this, if you could take a look at that and Garrett. Yeah, Julie, uh, I'll look at it. Okay, thank you. And then uh, anything else from the group before I move on? Okay, and then 732, I have seen some back and forth dialogue. And let me see if Gamza's on the bridge. Gamza, you're on. Is there anything we need to bring up with the group today or are the discussions going, going sufficiently okay so far? Hi everyone, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Nice. Uh, uh, you can, uh, can you check my uh, last comment? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry for that, but uh, please uh, do not uh, merge my changes now uh, because I need to change Onos code, uh, OpenILT driver. Uh, so uh, Onos dependency will change and all applications Onos dependencies will change. Uh, uh, and now I'm working uh, I'm, I'm working on Onos uh, and I will create a Jira task and send my Onos changes um, to review uh, this week. Uh, so <laughs> sorry for that. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Any questions from the group? Sean, you may be on mute. I am on mute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's next to me, so I can tell. <laughs> um, so uh, since this is change of owner's code, and then we don't, um, I've been requesting support from ONF regarding to the owners since uh, John left. I think uh, I'm going to I'm going to send an email to Chad and and then make sure o, uh, ONF is aware about this change. Um, I, I, yeah, so uh, I mean, um, uh, Gamsa, do, have you talked to anybody in ONF regarding to this change? No. Okay. Or you don't think uh, you don't you don't think there will be too too big an issue on the ONO site? No. <laughs> because mean, I know ONOS. <laughs> Oh, because you know Onos? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, great. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, yeah, not, I, it's sorry? not a problem. Uh, and uh, already I finished Onos code changes. Uh, that's um, I will uh, create a uh, uh, get review just. Okay. So. <laughs> no, no, I think that that. Um, I wonder whether we need to create a ticket on Ono's side to do this. Yeah, yeah. I will create a Jira task. Okay, great. That will be great. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, uh, you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Any other questions? Then the next, uh, we could probably cover a couple of them at once on BB Sim. Uh, let me see if we've got Ketasan. Oh, I don't see Ketasan on. Today. Okay, so we have a few in flight for for BB Sim, and so since Ketasan is not on, we'll just kind of quickly move over those today, and then I can follow up with him later. And we talked about the the refactor for the robot test case and the path forward for that patch. So then I think next is 184. This one, I I think this one is being worked by Lynn. And there was some related work on the state machine that has been completed, if I remember correctly, for a different JIRA ticket. Is that correct? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm testing the uh, software upgrading. We are almost high now, so. Uh, Yeah, this can be added to Sprint C7. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, other questions? Just a quick question on, on the, the upgrade. Are we, are we using the, the extended message set for that, you know, the larger messages, or, or is it still the 42? Yeah. Okay. Right, good. Uh, yeah, the open OpenLMC doesn't support the extended. 
Chip, you broke up a little bit there. Oh, the Open OpenOMCI only supports the basic message set at this time. Okay, well, we have a story for uh, performance improvement later on then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there is one in the, out there. <laughs> yeah, I think that was one of the ones that when we did the uh, request to the operators for prioritization, I think that was one of the items, if I remember correctly, that was a little further down on the list, but to be supported later. Okay, any other questions? And the next one was again a BB SIM issue that I believe uh, Kitasan would be working on. So let's go to 540. I know there's been some back and forth discussion with Amit and David on this. And uh, do we have any any updates we need to or discussion we need with the group today, or are we getting close? Do you think Amit and David? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. I do know that they have been ha uh, have discussion in Garrett, so that is out there for review as well. Others are, are welcome to go review that also. I'll move on to 11.62. So I had a related question for this, and I think Stefan was assigned to this, I'm trying to remember. Um, so 11.62, there was a short-term patch available that we could use until fall 1174 is done. And 1174, oh, I had it open already. Here we go. So this one, it looks like it's in progress. So um, Ken, do you know if this one is, is planned to be completed during sprint seven? I or know. do I need to I, check I, on this, that? I, this is, uh, is done in a new call. Okay. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be done in the previous call. Oh, um. Yes, that's the, the, the thing. It's the, the way, 1162 is kind of the way to bring back this improvement to the old call. Not, okay. not as complete, but just the, the short way into uh, improving this in the current call. And then when we go to the new core, obviously this goes away and they have all of this um, kind of properly. Okay, so this is strictly for the new core. So thank you for that. I think I didn't capture this very well when I put in the notes during that last meeting. So I guess the question still stands then on whether or not we want this done for the old core and merged in at this point. Do we have, and then, a, and we did have the comment here also that if it's merged in, then some of the Jenkins unit tests need to be modified as well. Do we have so, any view from the group? Yes. Nick, did you have a comment? Yeah. Um, so yesterday with Matt, we did pool regression testing using this changes uh, in addition to the other changes. The only okay. question we had is was, was it going to work? Uh, after reconciliation, if you restart vCore, is it going to work? And it does. Everything is working fine the way we expect it to. Um, I removed the unit test today because basically all of them were failing since it's changing what we're storing. All the tests refer to the things we no longer store. Um, but yeah, it's out there. Uh, Jenkins is happy. I, I had to remove the test. Okay. I, uh, yeah. It, it's working. Do we do want it or not? That's maybe a community question, but I know okay. it's decreasing significantly the number of keys. And in our case, it's kind of important. Yeah, we're like, we have 1,000 ONUs that restart 50 times, you know, NTD will fill up, something like that. So there's some, there's some yeah. threshold of, of, you know, complete death. Yeah, it's, we pay time with this. <laughs> Uh, if I understand the fix uh, well, uh, this is a very good improvement on the on the current situation, uh, but doesn't fix the problem entirely. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. The problem is basically now the keys are the hash of the data. Mm -hmm. so there's still some cases when some new um, new keys are created because the data changed, and we kind of lost the handle of the old keys. 
Okay. So it's, it's not, not everything is removed, but now the, the yeah, it fixes, it, yeah, it reduces the problem, it mitigates the problem, it doesn't fix it completely. To fix it, oh, okay. we need to complete rewrite, and I, I don't think it's worth the effort knowing that we're going to go to the new core and it is being rewritten already in the new core. I don't want to rewrite it twice, basically. Doesn't make sense. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Okay. So we're almost out of time. So what I may ask folks to do is if you could maybe capture in Jira here your view, if you would like to have this merged in or to the contrary as well. If you could capture that in a comment in JIRA, since we're about out of time here, I would appreciate that. And then since we've just got a couple minutes left, we didn't get through quite all of the items. Um, we, so let me see if there's any specific ticket that people would like to look at while we've got the group on the bridge for a couple minutes of the remaining items. Uh, I'd like 1190 if possible. Okay. Oh yeah, we can sit on this for a while, yeah. All right, go ahead. So this change, basically, it's a change in OF agents that when querying Volta, before passing the information to Ono saying the device is available, it's checking if the device is reachable. If the device is reachable, basically it's not telling Ono it's available. It's currently, um, we lose an edge core. If, if the OLT is rebooted, Volta knows it's unreachable, but oh no, she's still happy about it. It's like it's available, I'm still good. So it's not good for like flow repush because when we don't get it back, basically, from Ono's perspective, it's always there. Sure. We never lost it, so we can get it yeah. back. <laughs> well, is Onos's view a view of the physical presence or of the of the database entry that you know? Currently, is... basically, it's a view of the the entry. If the entry exists. Onos is happy, it considered the device available. With this change, if the entry exists and the device is reachable, now Onos would know that the device is active and repush flows if needed, which yeah. is the, the crucial bit. I mean, it, 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 uh, <laughs> it, it's the most interesting view. Yeah. So it's, it's more like uh, making sure that when Ono says the device is available, the device actually is available. Okay. I I I put a, a quick uh, review on that, uh, Nick. Uh, suggesting it instead of having the OF agent to know about the device, there's two different ways that you can do that. Is either have a new API that will retrieve only reachable devices, or uh, to make it a change in the logical device to add the state of the root device in it. So this way the OF agent doesn't need to know uh, about the details of a device. It needs only to know about the logical device. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can do that. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you for that. And we've got about one minute left. Any Any other issues? And then let me see. So I think we'll go quickly back to the agenda and then a reminder oops wrong highlight on Thursday this week we do have the discussion planned on the high availability design and and on the Kubernetes cluster and this is related to some discussion a week or so a couple of weeks back on the Volta calls and with that we're out of time any last minute questions before we drop the bridge today just one comment um, there will be a document uh, it be the positioning document between the VOTA and the BAA. Um, it, it has been working since the the content of the document slowly since the April technical lockdown when we met with the BBF. So I sent a copy to the TST members right now, uh, I mean last night, and asking for additional comments. Um, it, 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 the, the both um, the ONF and the BBF has agreed that's a good position letter uh, uh, paper, and I think uh, the goal is maybe have a press release or something like that to to be published. So um, I will once I get a comment back from the TST members, and I will I will release it to the community, um, so people don't get a, a surprise when when there is a press release coming out. So 
Um, and, uh, at, at the meantime, we will also refer to the CBA community, and so because some of the content re does relate to CBA, um, so just let you know. Okay, thank you, Sean. And with that, we're out of time. I'll go ahead and stop the recording today.